exist, you deserve to exist. And if you deserve to exist, you deserve to be who you are as fully as you possibly can. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Peace is every step. We are actually in a period of global spiritual emergency. And I want to really stress that that's a, a positive thing. You are here for a reason, to be yourself expressed in fullness and in love. I am you. You are me. There's only one of us here. Why would I want to hurt myself? Well, I think love is the fabric of everything. And I'm another version of you. And today uh, I'm very excited to be talking about a subject uh, very dear to my heart, which is nutrition. And I am here in the studio with uh, the original Indiana Jones of Whole Foods, otherwise known as Mr. Cowboy Don Tolman. And Don is a uh, speaker that travels all over the country talking about the benefits of Whole Foods and making food thy medicine, as the good doctor once said. Don, welcome. Thanks, Lance. You know, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's really you. good to be here with you, too. I watched some of your stuff online, and I was really, really impressed with, with uh, you know, your passion for, for what you do. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself for the audience at home. Well, basically, uh, I was just a young kid born in Star Valley, Wyoming, and moved out to the Nevada's uh, mountains to a mining camp, and then went into a small community. Uh, there was a very religious group, and I grew up there. When I was 17, I ran away from home and mm -hmm. <clears throat> started my life. But I'd heard a story when I was a kid, because I went one time to all the kids in town, my friends, to their Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. And the Sunday school teacher, Mrs. Lake, had read out of this big book, I later learned it was called the Judeo-Christian Bible, the mm -hmm. King James Version. And she'd read this little story in there out of one of the littler books called the Book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And in the first chapter, it talks about a kid named Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the only reason I can still remember it is she said, uh, shake the bed, make the bed, and to bed you go. Mm -hmm. And she helped us to remember. <laughs> but these kids refused the food of the king, the meats, dainties, all the stuff. And all they wanted to eat was pulse and water. Mm -hmm. Well, the story goes on. Supposedly, just being on pulse and water for three years, they were ten times smarter than all of the learned men of the king. Hmm. So they were chosen to work with the king and run his kingdom. And I heard this story about how it made them smarter. And I thought, man, I want to be smart. Yeah, yeah, give me some of that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I want some pulse, <laughs> you know. And so I literally was so obsessed with the idea of finding out what pulse was because it saddened me when she didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. The bishop over this group didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I went to libraries as a young kid, asked librarians to help me find out what Pulse was, and mm -hmm. nobody knew. I spent 17 years of my adult life. I went to all seven continents. I lived among 17 different indigenous cultures, anywhere from six weeks to six months. Mm -hmm. I learned the wisdom of nuggets that they had amongst them. They're just basically disease-free. They have no doctors, no hospitals, no pharmaceutical drugs, not even supplement pills and capsules, and I wanted to know how are they doing this, so mm -hmm. that's what got me going. Uh, have you ever heard of the China Study? Yeah. It's interesting that in the China Study, uh, which is a mm -hmm. book that you can get you know, at your local health food store, the communities that had the least amount of animal protein, the least urban developed communities that were mm -hmm. eating uh, just plant-based foods all day, uh, you know, just like you're saying, we're, we're far outliving uh, the, the other communities and pretty much disease-free of diseases of the modern world. They had plenty of Absolutely. old school diseases mm -hmm. like uh, pneumonia and stuff like that, but no mm -hmm. cancer, no diabetes, no yeah. um, you know, high blood pressure, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And that is correct. And mm -hmm. because of what I learned and traveled and did, I, I've been a vegetarian my whole life. Mm -hmm. and all my kids are. Mm -hmm. None of them have been vaccinated. None mm -hmm. of them had vitamin K shots. None mm -hmm. of, you know, and they're healthy, mm -hmm. perfectly healthy and fine. Mm -hmm athletic and it's interesting because a lot of people don't realize plants really have the only real nutrition that the cells recognize. Mm -hmm. and in fact the word nutrition, nut, on the front of it comes with the Latin nux which means light. Mm -hmm. Nutrition means process of light. Plants, as you know, photosynthesize from sunlight, water, and salt in the ground. Mm -hmm. All of the known nutritional components that they've been able to study and identify. Mm -hmm. Every plant has it all. In fact, every plant has all 200,000 identifiable proteins. 
So when people say to me all the time, well, where do you get your protein? Right. Yeah, I get that a lot too. Yeah. yeah and it's like, well, where do you get your protein? You need to have your, your, your beef and your potatoes <laughs> and, your, and your bacon and, you yeah. know, and all these yeah. things. And, and that was me growing up. Like, you know, my grandmother every yeah. Sunday morning, oh, you got to have your, you know, yeah. your... your uh, As a kid, you're you know, trained yeah. into. Right. You're from yeah. a very early age. Then you actually go and do the research and you figure out the meat eaters in the, in the animal kingdom are the, right. are the ones that have to sleep, you know, 16 mm -hmm. hours a day or whatever to yeah. just digest that food. The fastest animals are actually the, the plant eaters. They're the fastest know? and most powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting. The word protein comes from the Greek proteus. And it means primary or first source. The only first source protein is in plants. Mm -hmm. If an animal comes up and eats plants, and then another animal eats the animal, ate the plants, they're getting secondary protein. Mm -hmm. Right, and it and takes so them a lot longer to yeah. actually digest that food it does. Than, than it does to just simply uh, you know, eat a handful of spinach. You don't need as much plant protein <laughs> because your body's able to use it right away. Right, and it has the highest concentrations of protein. Even grass mm -hmm. has the highest levels of proteins. That's mm -hmm. why elk, moose, horses, cows, mm -hmm. oxen pulling plows and yeah. turning the earth solid muscle. Mm -hmm. All they eat is grass and yeah. drink water. That Where doesn't do make much sense, right? Protein? <laughs> yeah, you that's know? not making any sense. That cow's got to be eating a steak True. or something, right? Yeah, you even know? gorilla, strongest right. animal on the earth mm -hmm. and has about 98% of the anatomy and physiological function of a human. Mm -hmm. They're 99.9% .9 fruitarians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they do fine. Yeah, it's this sort of story that, that I think we've been sold as a society, you know, like, oh, you, yeah, you have sure. to drink milk every day. You know, if you don't, you're in big trouble. But interesting in the, in the uh, China study that the number one cause of, of fragile bones and hip fractures and stuff mm -hmm. in, in uh, uh, people in old age is loss of calcium. But mm -hmm. those people actually happen to be the biggest milk drinkers, getting the most uh -huh. calcium. Yeah, and then they so. found in that book that it was actually sapping the, the calcium. It was preventing them from absorbing the calcium they should have had. It's really interesting, you know? isn't it? Mm -hmm. And other studies have shown that the biggest loss of calcium uh, in developed countries mm -hmm. is the fact that we have been academically indoctrinated to believe that nature made salt mm -hmm. is deadly and dangerous. You should never have salt. Mm -hmm. And that is a lie, that is a myth. Well, uh, salt is there a heals. difference between table salt and, say, mm -hmm. uh, rock salt, Betcha. like sea Too salt? Too many of the commercial salts have anti-caking agents, mm -hmm. which is aluminum, mm -hmm. powdered aluminum. Mm -hmm. And so people are shaking aluminum on their food and eating it. So mm -hmm. I agree, stay away from it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a good nature-made salt, like what's a good nature-made salt? By man. Like Himalayan sea salt? Himalayan uh, or, sea salt no. is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Redmond from the Redmond Mountain mm -hmm. uh, there in Utah is a good one. Uh, any kind of like Celtic salt where they haven't messed with it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these salts are raked with wooden rakes the way they were done for thousands of years and mm -hmm. that's the kind of salt you want. When you have that kind of salt taken into your body, they've studied this at Cornell and other places and found out it's the number one source of calcium mm -hmm. because the salt is an electrolyte to the cells and when the cells have enough of that electrolyte, the salt ionizes mm -hmm. into calcium first. Mm -hmm. That's why the ocean floors are covered in calcium because it's salt water. And when sunlight shines through salt water, it ionizes into calcium. Mm -hmm. So the ocean floors are completely covered in calcium. There's coral calcium. All of the seashells, crustaceans, how is, there's calcium. That's how is coral calcium? From. Can you take coral calcium as a, as a supplement? No, is, no. Is that People try to convince us that mm -hmm. our bodies can eat rocks mm -hmm. and use it. Mm -hmm. And there are studies that show that just absolutely is not the truth. Mm -hmm. It's, there's only a few rocks you can actually eat mm -hmm. and your body can use it. Salt mm -hmm. is one of them. So like salt rock or even the little grains. Well, but it's one of the very few rocks a human body can eat. Mm -hmm. And so they grind up and sell it as a supplement. They make mm -hmm. billions of dollars on these things. And the truth is your body is not using it. And mm -hmm. it can lead to bursitis and osteoporosis and all kinds of mm. stuff. So what are other good sources of calcium? Like I understand celery, like juicing um, mm -hmm. celery is really high in uh, like good sodium, uh, calcium, uh -huh. you know, all that kind of That's stuff. That's right. They yeah. know that celery is 21% mm -hmm. plant or phytolytic sodium. Mm -hmm. Your bones are supposed to be made of 21% sodium. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough sodium from things like celery, the body has to pull it out of the bones because mm -hmm. it's, the cells need it. Mm -hmm. And now your bones get weak. Mm -hmm. The greatest strengthening of bones is salt, uh, either in crisp, you know, rock right. form, mm -hmm. sea salt, things like that, or things like the celery, like mm -hmm. you're saying. In fact, a stick of celery looks just like a bone mm -hmm. 
snaps like a bone. Right. And so ancient healers believed in a law of similarities mm -hmm. that a thing like that looks like itself, it's drawn. Mm -hmm. And now they've studied that and found out it's true. Well, you can get rid of joint thing. problems. With you can it. say the same thing about a uh, carrot. Like, you know, you open mm -hmm. up a carrot and you look at it and it looks like the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the pupil of your eye. That's right. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, yeah. and carrots are very good for your eyes. You bet. Or every time I look at a uh, cauliflower, it looks like mm -hmm. your brain. Uh -huh. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if cauliflower was probably yeah. very good for your brain. I've written you know? about this stuff for 40 years, and I'm thankful because other doctors, more healing approached, and other people are finally getting it out there. Mm -hmm. Last time it was really taught in the modern world was in the 1600s, mm -hmm. and that's why I was thrilled to come across it in these ancient collections. It's called the, in the Latin, the signum natura, mm -hmm. the signs of nature, mm -hmm. and it's fascinating because it's, it's true, and they're testing it now and finding out it's right. Mm -hmm. A tomato's red and has four chambers. Now they know the heart's red and has four chambers, and it is heart food. Hmm. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Like, what's your philosophy? Do you have one? I mean, is there is there? Well, I go along with what the ancient Swin mm -hmm. Wet, the mm -hmm. lady healers of Egypt, and then later on at the Pythagorean Academy where it was all being brought together again. But the Swin Wet, they understood, and now today's physics has confirmed it, that all matter forms into five shapes. Mm -hmm. And then those shapes can combine and make more complex structures. And so you look in nature and matter forms itself into circles like, uh, or a sphere, you know, mm -hmm. like an orange or your eyeball, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's these different shapes in nature. Another one is the cube or square. Mm -hmm. And a lot of salt crystals are cubes and square. Mm -hmm. uh, another one was a spiral. And you see spirals everywhere out there in seashells, some animal horn spiral, mm -hmm. the thumbprint is a spiral, the hair as it comes out is a spiral, the mm -hmm. cochlea of the ear is a spiral. Well, yes. Another thing was the five-pointed star. Right. We stand in the shape of a five-pointed star. Mm -hmm. You cut an apple, perfect five-pointed star. Mm -hmm. So they knew that an apple a day, literally, Mm -hmm. would target the entire physiological anatomical structures of the body and it works doctors hate that message mm -hmm. but it's been proven to be correct what does an apple do that is of a benefit mm -hmm. apples they've studied them and they found out that it has over 10,000 nutritional components mm -hmm. nutritional chemistry is only named 121 of them mm -hmm. but the ones they've named you get into it one of the best thing about apples is that it has one of the seven known fibers mm -hmm and it's pectin. Yes. It's the only fiber that crosses the blood-brain barrier and it goes into the hydronium fluids of the brain and absorbs it. The little particles of apple pectin swell up like sponges mm -hmm. and because a lot of heavy metals, aluminum and mercury and lead and everything else goes into the brain and settles and you begin to lose cognitive function, loss of memory, mm -hmm. those apples cross through hmm. and absorb that and carry it out through the excretory system and uh, oftentimes memory is regained. Do you get the same benefit from juicing that you do from uh, eating the apple? Uh, it depends on the juicer. Mm -hmm. uh, in the ancient world, the healers knew there were three paths you could follow in healing mm -hmm. and health and maintenance. There was fast, there was faster, and there was fastest. Mm -hmm. The fastest healing of any kind, and they knew it by watching animals. Mm -hmm. Any animal on this earth that they've ever observed, if it's hurt or sick, it stops eating mm -hmm. and will only have water. Then when it's healed, it'll start eating again. Even cats and dogs, if they're sick or injured, they'll eat grass to make themselves vomit and throw right. everything out. And they won't have nothing but water until they're healed. And so they tried that on themselves. And they found out that an extended water fast is one of the most incredible restoratives and healing things you can do. But that's the fastest. And in today's world, people can't handle skipping a meal, right. let alone doing an extended. So then juices is the faster route. Mm -hmm. And then fast, and the word fast doesn't mean starve to death. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Mm -hmm. It means to hold fast, to hold firm. It means to make strong. And so just eating the foods, having the fibers. But you can speed that up by juicing because you can have more. And the body doesn't have to go into digestion and working with that, which mm -hmm. takes about 90% of electrical energy. So juices is faster fastest as water. Mm -hmm. They've done a lot of studies now with things like uh, caloric restriction in both people and in, in animals. Mm -hmm. And by shutting off your digestive system for a short period of time, mm -hmm. uh, it allows your internal kind of mechanisms to sort of yeah. take a break and heal. Your cells don't age as much, mm -hmm. you know, from what they're yeah. finding. Literally, yeah. less 
mm -hmm. is more. Right, right. You know, but like you say, people tend to you know skip one meal and go, oh my gosh, I'm 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 sick and I, I can't stand this. And but what they're not realizing is that they're actually detoxing from all that caffeine, all the sugar, mm -hmm. all the uh, you know the hormones and, and stuff that they're that they're eating all day. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go even one meal without that, and then your body try, is trying to get rid of it, and, and that's, that's what they're true. feeling. That is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. The energy, which is about ninety percent of the electrical force of the body when mm -hmm. you eat a meal, goes to that mm -hmm. to break it down and get it out of the house. Mm -hmm. You skip that. All that 90% of the energy goes to getting rid of mm -hmm. toxins mm -hmm. and clearing and healing. It's, it's correct. Mm -hmm. It is true. And that's ancient wisdom that has been reconfirmed today and published in actual medical investigative studies. Mm -hmm. It's the process of healing. So we went to the uh, Conscious Life Expo. Let's go to a clip yeah. and, then, and then let's come back and let's talk some more. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got to get back to simplicity. <laughs> Nature's complex so that we don't have to be. We sit there academically and we have taken the wisdom of the scholars who put together what was called alchemy. And that was smashed and burnt and done away. And chemistry by the academics was put in place. And so they'll sit there and they, for instance, will take a food, like a tomato, and they understand chemically through spectral analysis, through electron microscopes, through all kinds of molecular studies, and they finally name a nutritional component. Why this tomato has lycopene. Lycopene is good for your heart. You look up lycopene, it's Latin for red. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, tomatoes are red. We spent millions finding that out. <laughs> An apple has over 10,000 nutritional components. You can be as dumb as a sack of hammers, and as long as you eat that apple, you got it done. So what are some practical things that someone whose health is, is not what they want it to be, or, or someone who maybe wants to cut back on sugar intake or help a weight problem, Whatever, uh, something mm -hmm. that they can do at home uh, to really uh, start that process you know, naturally through Whole Foods. Yeah. You know, the thing that uh, people need to understand is what were the seven principles of health that was taught in the ancient world and handed down through generations. Because mm -hmm. it was tested over time and distance in the human experience and they found that it was correct and true. Mm -hmm. Being healthy and restoring the body and maintaining into longevity with full health mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, everything. Uh, it comes down to these seven principles. Making sure that on a daily basis, you have good, clean air to breathe out of doors. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people forget that. Going for a walk in nature. They sleep you know. in mm -hmm. uh, homes where all the windows and doors are closed, the furnace is running or the air condition is running. They get up, they get into the car, the windows are up, the air conditioning's on or the heater's on. They go into an office, sit in a cubicle, cubicle for eight to 10 hours. Mm -hmm. The right. windows don't yeah. open. And so we are missing the most critical life-giving thing that there is in most of the developed countries and that is moving air. Mm -hmm. We're electrical beings. We run on electric force. And when air moves every 16 feet, it's purified and is fully charged. And when you're sleeping in air that is stagnant and dead, because air can be stagnant. Mm -hmm. We had miners die when I was a kid. They broke through a rock wall, went into a cavern, and they were all dead in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Even though they were breathing in and out, it was lifeless air. air. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what the number one thing people need to do is to get outside every hour on the hour, if you're stuck in an office building or something, mm -hmm. get out there for five minutes every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. When you sleep at night, open the window in the room you sleep. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you don't feel safe, just put a stick down there so the window only opens that far and people can't mm -hmm. open it. Mm -hmm. And, but you need to sleep. No furnace, no air conditioning, even in the winter time. I live in Park City, Utah. Mm -hmm. Right now we have six feet of snow all around my house. So you're, you're When it cold. comes to the nighttime, <laughs> yeah. seven o'clock at night, the furnace goes off. Mm -hmm. And even during the day, Every day we open the windows and doors for one hour and let it just clear out. Mm -hmm. 
because there are chemicals and things that sublimate from the walls, from the insulation, from chemicals under the cupboards, under the sink. Mm -hmm. And if you're not opening and getting that air going mm -hmm. and electrifying it, you're going to have lung congestion because the mucosal cells mm -hmm. are being burned by dead air mm -hmm. uh, in the bronchioles. And so it produces that. So people get a lung congestion. They think it's a bug from Korea mm -hmm. that's come to attack them because mm -hmm. that's what they're taught. Mm -hmm. It's not. It is not. It's dead air. And you're burning your lungs. And so, so you do all of this. And I don't mean to go off. No, no, no. So yeah. what about what about like things like air purifiers or even a Himalayan uh, salt crystal lamp? A lot of people say that will purify the air mm -hmm. in, a, in a room, uh, get rid of uh, electromagnetic uh, yeah, pollution. The ions stuff like that. of the Himala Himalayan rock pine. Mm -hmm. When it comes to air purifiers, when it comes to uh, you know ionizing the air and all, uh, the National Laboratory of Sciences on the Big Island of Hawaii were funded $15 million over a two-year study to find out what's the best machine that is out there. They tested machines that are anywhere from $500 mm -hmm. to a quarter million dollars and tested it. When they were all done, one of their directors there bought me a ticket, flew me to Hawaii and mm -hmm. said, I know what you believe and who you are, but I want you to see this, mm -hmm. the results. I walk into there, long story short, guess what machine is the best one you can possibly have? No idea. A ceiling fan. A ceiling fan. So just turning your ceiling fan on. That vertical the air. rotational flow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ionizes the air, electrifies the air, and because it's negative ions, all the particles and dander and everything into the house attracts to the blades. Mm -hmm. It purifies the air. And as long as you clean those blades about every two, three weeks, you've got the best machine. The only thing that can beat it that they found is when you open your windows and doors. That's interesting. Okay, so that's from a from a lung perspective, and then what about from a, uh, a, a healing perspective for through nutrition and stuff? Like, what are some simple yeah. things people can so do? So the seven principles was good, clean air. Mm -hmm. The next step was good, clean water. And you don't have to have $6,000 machines to do something to your water to make, no, no. Do what nature does. It evaporates water, sends it into the sky, hits it with electricity, and it falls, and it's known as distilled water. Mm -hmm. And the people say, oh, well, distilled water doesn't have any minerals. Drink that, it's going to leach the bones right out mm -hmm. your body, blah, 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 blah. They checked out at MIT. The purest water on the face of the earth is a distilled water. Mm -hmm. And they cost about 120 to 150 bucks for one. You distill it, you put it in glass, you set it out in sunlight for 15 minutes. Within 90 seconds of distilled water being in sunlight, it ionizes into calcium, then magnesium, then iron. Within 15 minutes, all of the known minerals really? are in that water just from sunlight. Mm -hmm. When you drink water and mm -hmm. get into the sunlight and have salt, mm -hmm. you can't have a mineral shortage. Hmm. It's all produced through that process. That's interesting. Just the way it does for plants, just the way it does for animals. Mm -hmm. Animals don't go around swallowing pills and capsules and doing stuff. They don't. Mm -hmm. They drink water. They're in the sunlight. They eat plants. That's interesting. So air, water, sunshine. Mm -hmm. The sunshine is the healthiest thing on this planet for every living thing, including humans. Mm -hmm. In fact, Dr. Kenneth Nelda, the uh, director of the Dermatology Society, uh, blasted 3,500 of his colleagues at a convention in Orlando, Florida, and said, stop telling people that the sun causes skin cancer. Right, right, right. It does right. not. Sunscreen. It's yeah. a not enough fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. eaten in the season that they grow in your temperate zone is one of the leading causes. And then sunscreen mm -hmm. is the next leading cause. Well, you know, it's interesting because I used to work out in the sun all the time. Yeah. I used to work out in the fields. And yeah. I noticed if I was eating a lot of a, a plant-based stuff and if I was juicing at that time, I wouldn't get a sunburn, even yeah. though even though I'm like fair <laughs> complected. But if my diet was not good, man, I'd get burnt real bad. I'd look like a lobster. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would just get tan, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so that taught me right there. Oh, wait a minute. What you're actually eating is actually controlling your body's ability 100%. to 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 ward off uh, yeah. the harmful rays of the sun. Yep. And I know there's been a lot of studies that have done now that talk about how uh, certain types of sunscreen mask certain types of UV radiation, but they don't mask necessarily the really harmful stuff. So so you're actually not getting sometimes the good stuff and you're getting the bad stuff, depending upon what sunscreen you're using. And depending on the yeah. chemicals in it, it goes right into your body, into mm -hmm. the bloodstream, right. it causes side effects that you run to the doctor for and get on medications, mm -hmm. cause... Yeah, and then the medication sunscreen. leads to another medication and another right. and another, and you're on and this kind of whole stair stop. step. Uh, yeah. Coconut oil. 
you know, coconut oil mm -hmm. is, is has been used for forever in in right. uh, you know tropical countries as a That's sunscreen, right. as a, as a moisturizer, as uh, you know, as it's about a suntan enhancer. Mm -hmm. Every human on this earth is supposed to build a dark suntan for three months out of every year. Hmm. Then you have all the vitamin D stored in the liver that it needs. You have all of the other biophoton nutritional components that they haven't even named. They don't even know what it does. They mm -hmm. know it affects all 10,000 trillion cells, right. but they don't know what to call it or what mm -hmm. to do. Well, vitamin D now deficiency is actually a, a really big thing. I mean, they're saying mm -hmm. that almost everyone is vitamin D deficient you know, they don't for all the no reasons sunlight. you're saying. Yeah, they're, you're going from cubicle to, to room at home to car. And you're not getting any vitamin D. You're automatically deficient, which is leading to things like depression, and it's leading to uh, you know lethargy and a bunch of other stuff. You bet it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people have emotional stress and mm -hmm. problems, they should get out in that sun and even learn to master staring at the sun in the mornings and evenings. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of so. What kind of benefit does that give you? Now. What's that? What is what is like staring at at the sunrise or the or the mm. sunset? Uh, what kind of benefit does that give you? You can put your hand on the horizon and you can stare at the sun. Mm -hmm. That's 10 degrees of arc. Mm -hmm. When it gets above that, stop. Mm -hmm. And when it's coming down out of the sky, when it hits here, you can watch it till it disappears. Because, you're, because the atmosphere is diffusing uh, the uh -huh. light a little bit. So, uh -huh. so it's like you're, you know, that's that real pretty kind of magic yeah. hour uh, type of day. And the frequencies of yellow-orange mm -hmm. light frequencies go through the pupils, cross the ocular chiasma, back into the visual cortex of the brain, and literally stimulates the neurochemistry of emotions, of happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. That's why they know they know this and it's published and they taught it anciently places like seattle alaska during the dark periods there's mm -hmm. more suicides mm -hmm. and depression there is yeah ever yeah there is well sunlight therapy is a, is something that a lot of uh, psychologists are mm -hmm. now uh, recommending even especially in those darker climates there's people with yeah. sun lamps that yep. will sit under that sun lamp just to, so yeah. that they can get enough light when talking about color i mean you're not mm -hmm. just making that that up like you say that's been around for a long time even if you're in the theater and you go mm -hmm. and you you wait in the green room yeah. Why is that room green? You know, yeah. because green is a soothing, <laughs> relaxing color that allows you to chill out before you have to go on stage. There is a relationship to color and emotion. There is. And mm -hmm. the thing is, it's the same way with the colors of foods. Mm -hmm. It used to be called the rainbow bridge. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it was a pot of gold. That was symbolic of your body in its most precious functional state. And so if you eat red foods, orange, yellow, green, mm -hmm. blue, indigo, and violet, the seven colors, mm -hmm. it affects the different seven groupings of emotions mm -hmm. and the seven body systems. It's like when people are depressed, orange and yellow are some of the most fabulous colors that they can wear mm -hmm. to lift them. Yes. And if they will eat an orange and chop up pineapple and eat bits of pineapple and orange together, mm -hmm. people who suffer extreme depression, anxieties, and stress it just lifts them. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to watch all of that work inside the body and, mm -hmm. and fix right. what they think is broken. It's not really that hard. If people say, oh, well, that's just way too hard. I can't do it. Go to a restaurant, you know, challenge mm -hmm. the chef to say, look, just make me a bowl. Just put, throw a bunch of different colored uh, vegetables yeah, in there. Sure. It's like they'll do it. They like that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they actually do. Yeah. And so in these principles of health, you go from good air, good mm -hmm. water, sunshine, walking, whole foods, mm -hmm. non-toxic relationships. Mm, that's the and big one. passion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of things people forget in modern developed countries because we have automobiles and mm -hmm. you know motorcycles and public transit. We don't walk enough. No. We should walk 45 minutes to an hour five times a week. And all of their published studies on it show in New England Journal of Medicine and other places that mm -hmm. it's printed that it will add 18 years to your life if you'll do that five times a week wow. and most people don't even know they, they think they're walking because they're walking around the office right or they go from the house to the car or from the bus stop onto the bus that's not that's a shuffle that's not walking but there's also the the actual visual information mm -hmm. that you're getting by looking at, a, at a something that is at a distant point that's you right. know you're you're or by looking at different things here 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 and here right is actually adding more and more information to your brain, which is, which is pulling you out of that funk that you're in. It's pulling Absolutely you out of, it's, it's, a, it's actually making you more attentive on a daily basis yeah. just by um, being out in the open and walking around. Yeah, moving your body through space mm -hmm. is one of the healthiest things you can possibly do. You're in outdoor air, carry a bottle of water with you, mm -hmm. and enjoy the sunshine and the walk. Just get out there and go. And then the whole foods, and then another huge thing uh, in modern society, we can have some pretty stressful relationships that are toxic, mm -hmm. whether it's at work, 
socially, you know, well, that's it. intimate you can do, relationships. You can do all of this other stuff and um, say, well, I'm like so healthy. And then you're still yeah. walking around yelling at everybody all day or, or yeah. just feeling bad about your, your yeah. job or your relationship or whatever. You're still going to get sick. You have to start mm -hmm. inside yourself first and yeah. then work your way out. Yeah. And ancient wisdom healers knew pleasure mm -hmm. is the highest good. Mm -hmm. And so when you have relationships and friendships and you have pleasure, Mm -hmm. in fresh air, pleasure in mm -hmm. clean water, well, you're, you're pleasure finding, like, in, like you said, you're finding you know, your passion, you're finding yeah, your, your, uh, yeah. your joy. It's about finding yeah. your love. It's like yeah. unconditional love. It's, it's finding the, uh, the, the, the good even in the bad. Absolutely. And that whole thing of passion, a lot of people never look at the etymologies of words, but mm -hmm. the historical context as it came into English was the passing of ions. Mm -hmm. That when you're That's right. pass ions, it's yeah, the yeah, pass right. ions. Mm -hmm. uh, in ancient Egypt, they called it the neaters. Democritus and others, 600 BC, called mm -hmm. it the atomos. Then in the English today, we call it the atoms. Mm -hmm. But they knew there was only one disease possible mm -hmm. in humans. And you can Google how many diseases are there, and depending on the website, it's going to say 16,000. 26,000, right. 34,000, mm -hmm. plus 17,000 rare diseases. <laughs> and they knew there was only one. And that's chaos at the atomic level that leads to chaos at the molecular level that leads to chaos at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. And when enough cells are in chaos, you feel it. Right. It's I, the difference between yeah. being in a, uh, a coherent body state where everything's functional or mm. being in a, a chaotic body state where you exactly. all of a sudden now you have things like cancer, diabetes, sure. all these things. Again, because they don't have the right information, the right con conduct, uh, we call it a uh, conduit, you know, uh, because you're not getting... At the atomic level. Right. And so you feel it as a symptom, which mm -hmm. means a sign or a signal of an, an atomic chaos. Mm -hmm. And there's only two causes. There's only two causes. No mystery. Mm -hmm. Every disease... And that's that all the time have. we have today. Just kidding. Yeah, Go ahead. Thank you. It's been great. <laughs> what, are, what are the two causes? <laughs> the two causes is toxicity mm -hmm. or deficiency. Mm -hmm. And if you live in America, you're probably toxic and deficient. Yeah. And so people need to realize if you have a symptom of a disease and they don't realize doctors have a license to practice on you. You mm -hmm. need to look up the word practice. Mm -hmm. It means experiment. <laughs> it <laughs> to, does. To, to try. <laughs> and they can legally now <laughs> diagnose you. Right. Gnosis means knowledge. Mm -hmm. Dia means split and unknown. Mm -hmm. Legally, in courts of law, it literally means we told you we were guessing. Right. And if you'll sign mm -hmm. and take full legal responsibility mm -hmm. for any harm that can happen to you, we're willing to practice yeah. on you. I'm no doctor. I'm not a, uh, an expert on any of this mm -hmm. stuff. And I don't you know, pretend to be to anybody at home you know, that, that knows sure. this. But, but at the same time, it's common sense. What does it hurt you to to switch out your diet, eat more organic foods? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it, it is common sense to me that when you have a genetically modified food that's been made to withstand mm -hmm. massive doses of, of pesticide, yeah. you know, and then they in, they're injecting all of that pesticide into that food, yeah. basically, that's going to have an effect on you. Yeah. You know, like like why do you want to eat that? So it costs me a dime more to, to buy an apple that's <laughs> not, you know, uh, with uh, the pesticide. I'll sure. I'll take that risk. Sure. You're just eating toxic stuff that's going to create right. chaos Which is, at uh, the atomic level. I was reading up on on um, the liver, on the fact that, that like you know, so many Americans have mm -hmm. problems with their liver and they don't realize it because mm -hmm. the liver is trying to get rid of all of this stuff, mm -hmm. creating all of these other diseases. A good way of looking at it is to to make the analogy between Eastern and Western medicine. If you go mm -hmm. to a Chinese uh, doctor. They're going to look at your tongue. They're going to look at your skin. They're going to they're going to do all of these things to figure out the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a car accident and I have a broken leg, take me to the hospital. You exactly. know, like give me a drug. You know, and I'm I in pain. I agree with that. Whatever. Yeah. But that's addressing a, a symptom. That's a, a very trauma, specific a trauma. Crisis, you yeah. know, if if you have an underlying chronic issue, you know, okay, well, mm -hmm. what's the cause of that underlying issue? You know, it's not just the high blood pressure that's mm -hmm. giving you the heart attack. It's what's causing the high blood pressure. That's yeah. common sense. Exactly. You know, like, well, I'm eating a ton of salt every day and I'm drinking, you know, diet sodas all day. Uh, you know, maybe that's somehow related to my, my high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Could be, <laughs> you know. It's fascinating because if you have a good diet, the more salt you have, the more balanced your blood pressure is. The more and natural salt. The more natural salt, though. Nature made. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the difference. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> let's go to another clip from Conscious Life Expo and let's come right back. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. They've actually done studies, cost about three million bucks. They found out that these two hunks of flesh that hang down from the trunk are supposed to move you around. <laughs> Jeez. Most people think they walked all day because they were in the office walking around, or they walked from the car to the house. 
<laughs> or from there into McDonald's. <laughs> Those, that's not walking, that's a shuffle. Most people get on treadmills or on bicycles up on stands. That, fine, that's fine. Oh, cardio, ah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Take your body outside in the open air, take a bottle of water, and move your body through space. <laughs> God, people don't get it anymore. And they tested this at MIT with people on the treadmills, people on the bicycles, and people go and walk. If you walk, 45 minutes a day, five times a week, they know on average it adds 18 years to your life. 18 years on average. The treadmills don't do it. The bicycles up on a stand don't do it. It's a cross-patterning motion. And all of your senses involved in observing the nature around you and where you are. It's your eyes seeing different things, your ears hearing birds and interpreting all kinds of different stuff going on. It's the smells, it's everything that's going on in nature and as you're walking that lifts the functional capacity emotionally and the entire function of the body. You can be coming all of that and you just don't know who you are. Just shut up and go for a walk. <laughs> So we're back, and before we run out of time, you mentioned that you went and stayed with cultures all over the world. What are some of the cultures that you stayed with, and, and, and what are some of the specific things that you came away from some of those meetings with yeah. that could benefit somebody here at home? I went to some of the Occidental countries, uh, you know, Japan. I, today, mm -hmm. I'm still invited. I lecture in China, mm -hmm. Korea, Japan, uh, Australia, which I'll be back down there in about four days, mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, it all started for me when I went down to Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. And you're not supposed to leave the tour group, but I was a young guy and, and so I took off, went all down through the rainforest, uh, met the people with the Shipibos and some of the other cultures. And as I got to looking at their petroglyphs and ideograms and mm -hmm. drawings on pottery and stone and everything else, and then going over to Egypt and through Europe and all around, uh, looking and seeing the paintings and what they left for information for future generations. Mm -hmm. Today's academics, archaeologists, uh, archaeologists and others, they only know the exoteric mm -hmm. interpretation which they have voted on and accepted. Mm -hmm. There's an esoteric hidden language that was only for those who had the eyes to see, meaning they were in on the oral traditions right. and understood. And some of the most fascinating things about these people is they know that nature's complex so that we don't have to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's 10,000 nutritional components in an apple. You don't even have to know one name of the 121 they've identified mm -hmm. in order to get the benefit. Mm -hmm. You can be as dumb as a sack of hammers as long as you eat the apple. You got it done. Right. And, and again, it's, it's, it's common everything. sense. As close as you can get back to nature, yeah. you know, the better it. nature can work for you. you know, and, right. and, but you know, when I was growing up, I never liked to eat salads. I never liked to eat apples. Mm -hmm. I never liked to eat any of that stuff. Yeah. You're so overstimulated with your palate. Number yeah. one, but then also if you're not eating good organic fruits and vegetables, uh -huh. you're, uh, it's not doesn't taste good. Yeah, you if know. people would support the local growers mm -hmm. of organics, get to your local stuff. And one of the things that a good friend of mine, he's passed on now, Norman Walker, he created a juicer called the Norwalk Juicer. Right. Uh, when he was 50, he was told by a doctor that he'd be dead soon, mm -hmm. and he said, no, thank you. Started juicing, doing all this mm -hmm. stuff. He died at 109. Yeah. And he was a neighbor and a friend. We went to the spectral analysis labs at Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. We had organic food locally grown. We had foods that were shipped in that were pesticides, herbicide, fungicide, mm -hmm. all the stuff. He chopped them up. He put them into the spectral analysis. And the ones that were not organic, it just showed dozens and dozens of toxic chemicals. Mm -hmm. Did the organic, it was free mm -hmm. of any kind of chemical. Then he said, watch this, and I hope that you'll share this with people in the future. And I said, okay, what? He took the foods that were not organic, that he hadn't chopped up yet. 
He took one cup of apple cider vinegar and put it in a bowl. He put two quarts of water in. He took those foods, swished them around for 30 seconds, rinsed them in water, put them in the spectral analysis, and it was as clean as the organic. So you're saying he took apple cider vinegar, he poured it in the, uh, in mm -hmm. the bowl with, yeah. with what? With water? Uh huh, two and quarts of water. Two quarts of water. How much apple cider vinegar? I, I think he used one cup. Okay, so one cup of apple yeah. cider vinegar, and then he took that apple, or what was it? Like a, 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 a He fruit? just took a whole variety. A, a variety of stuff. He just put it in there, switched it around for 30 seconds, uh -huh. rinsed and, it off. And rinsed it off, and that sapped. Uh, the, the, the chemicals out yeah, of the See, I didn't even know that, but that was his whole study. He was uh -huh. a chemist. Uh, and who he, was this? Norman Walker. Oh, Norman Walker. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And so what happened in all of that, he shared with me what they had found out. Mm -hmm. Every plant on this earth creates what is called alleochemicals, and it will not let anything on the interior mm -hmm. that is toxic to it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can get through it is an insect or an animal coming up and chomping away. But any kind of toxicities, the alleochemicals protect it. And so the apple cider in water washes it all off. Mm. I want to go back to uh, Dr. Norwalk uh, yeah. again. And, and this, uh, this is, is it, was it, uh, is that his name, Norwalk? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, he, he made the Norwalk. Norman Walker. Nor Norman Walker, right, who made the mm -hmm. Norwalk juicer. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I was just watching this documentary on the uh, Gershon therapy. There's a clinic in, in uh, you know, several other countries. In, in many other countries, it's, a, it's called uh, Dying to Have Known, I think is the name of the documentary. Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube. And, you know, there's, there's uh, clinics popping up all around the world that are using uh, that Norwalk juicer or juicers mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, it's juice. I mean, it's like they're, they're, they're just yeah. basically uh, feeding, uh, you know, uh, juice. And uh, people are having, again, it's dealing with the underlying chronic issues. It's not right. dealing with just the symptoms. That's right. It's getting and, to cause. Right. There's so many things that people can do if they just start taking responsibility for their own health. Absolutely. You know, and like I said, you got a major problem, you got to get help for it, get help by all means. Mm -hmm. But at least do your due diligence. You know, discern. Mm -hmm. I always say discern. Figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. In fact, for 40 years in the media, magazines, public lectures, I've been barking the self-care revolution. Mm -hmm. That's the revolution that needs to come. Not mm -hmm. marching, yelling, screaming. Mm -hmm. Individuals taking self-responsibility for their own care mm -hmm. because you can heal yourself. No one knows more about your body than you, mm -hmm. and yet we're taught that experts do. Mm -hmm. And it's just not so. We need to listen to our gut. We need to listen to our intuition. We need to take a look and see, do we have clean air? Do we have clean water? Do we get in the sunshine? Do mm -hmm. we go for a walk? Do we eat good organic whole mm -hmm. foods? Do we have loving relationships? Do we take the time to be about our passion? Mm -hmm. And they believed that if you did all that, you'd receive the greatest cosmological gift, which today we know as sleep. Mm -hmm. Sweet sleep, where you can create and invent and dream and imagine and wake up with happy feet. Mm -hmm. That's what we've got to get to. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can also wake up a little bit. Because yeah. I think it's, I think it's, it's, nice. you, know, you can get a good night's <laughs> sleep so that you can wake up and have, you know, yeah. uh, a little bit more of an aware uh, life, a you know, for, for the rest of, the, your, of your, your life. <laughs> and so, 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 so stay away from processed stuff. Get lots of air, lots of water, yeah. lots of good whole foods. And of course, I think probably the most important part yeah. is a better relationship both with yourself and the people around you. That's the true medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. All of that. Don, uh, you know, seriously, thank you for coming out to the studio. Um, I hope, uh, you know, I know you're only in town for a couple of days, and yeah. uh, I hope next time you will come back and we will continue this conversation. And, um, I would love to. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks, Lance. You know, okay. We are another version of you. Uh, this has been the uh, Waking Universe, and uh, have a good day. Lemons are the only food on the face of this earth that they have discovered has anions. All the other foods have cations. Anions target the liver because the liver makes bile, which is anions. When you drink the lemon juice, the liver is no longer stressed having to try to make it, and the energy of the liver goes into cellular uh, mutation and go ahead and develop itself. Within 90 days, these people have had a 100% functioning liver. 90 days of just drinking one cup of lemon juice each day. The problem with that is, the liver industry will go broke.